Yes, thank you. Yeah, so uh, first let me introduce short myself. I'm, I'm Thomas Patzka. I'm one of the uh, core developers of uh, the Sigma project. So mainly my work concentrates on the um, Pi Sigma and Sigma CLI on the tool chain. So the code that uh, makes queries or whatever else uh, from, from Sigma rules uh, that uh, makes them in the end uh, usable in, in uh, the context where you need it. And uh, yes, short introduction on Sigma. So, for when uh, when you don't know, heard about it, it's a generic language for lock detection. So you see a Sigma rule here in the screenshot, and uh, what you can do with uh, with the Sigma rule, you can it's human readable, so you can just look at it and uh, create your query by hand, or you can uh, use the converter, the tool chain. I mainly develop uh, with with uh, community of of contributors and. Uh, then convert it into uh, some query for your ZM or whatever you have where you need it. Um, furthermore, there's uh, content, so detection rules. So we have a, a open source repository with uh, over 2,000 uh, rules uh, nowadays. Uh, so it's really huge, and uh, we also try to uh, uh, to, to stay um, uh, current uh, with, with new threads uh, in, in this repository. And uh, yeah, this is uh, code I mentioned the toolchain uh, for parsing sigma rules, transformation of sigma rules, and uh, for converting them. If you want to know more about sigma or want to use it or interested in it, uh, sigma HQIO is your entry point. So, uh, some words about the project history. Um, so, we started around about uh, 2016, 17. Uh, with, uh, it was an experiment. So, Florian Roth uh, started this together with me. He had the initial idea of creating some uh, generic format for lock detections because <laughs> at this point he worked uh, um, in, in projects where we had to do this uh, for different customers, for different systems, so doing the same basically all over again and uh, I worked also in a context where I had to distribute detection rules to different entities of the company I worked for, uh, also uh, in different formats for different systems, so uh, it was a problem that had to be solved and yeah, we I've, so basically Florian wrote the uh, rules. I started with the tool chain. It was some yeah, uh, huge monolithic uh, POC grade uh, code, so nothing I would recommend anyone to use in production. It was just to show, yes, it works. And uh, yeah, finally, when you prove that it works, people start to do it in production, and uh, this is something you should be aware of. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, in 2020, uh, it was a great time, lots of time uh, sitting at home to... to um, doing something on the project. So uh, what we have done here is uh, splitting the rules from the code and uh, I also started to rewrite uh, the, the converter and creating Pi Sigma and Sigma CLI. Uh, that is now the current tool chain. And uh, yeah, currently we are in a, in a phase of evolution, so a lot of new features appeared in the last uh, uh, two years. Sigma correlation, something people waited a long time for. Uh, uh, filters, post-processing, so a lot of features that enable the users to use Sigma in, in their uh, detection CI, CD pipeline. Yeah, project structure, how it has started. So we had a huge repository and everything was contained in it. So. Uh, code and content, it was one repository. Uh, so rules and the Sigma converter, and the Sigma converter also contains the code to um, uh, convert then the rules uh, into specific ZMs, Splunk, Elasticsearch, and so, and so on. So I think at uh, the peak we had support for over 20 uh, target languages, and also for different data models. So uh, Sysmon, uh, Windows audit events, uh, CrowdStrike, events or so. Um, this is what, what uh, Sigma does. Yeah, it worked very well in the beginning. In the next slide I will tell you why. But it was also like in this picture. So one huge truck of stuff on it. Code, rules, and yes, um, the advantages of it was it's definitely user-friendly, so if there are not yet releases or so, in the very beginning, the user can just uh, pull it from the Git repository and use it. It yeah, works from the beginning, in, uh, installing some dependencies and that's it. 
so um, that's uh, fine. But um, uh, yeah, there's also low overhead on the detect uh, on the development side. So um, if you change something on the rule structure, something fundamental or so, or some major change, you can directly change uh, the code, and everything is in a commit, and the repository always stays in a functional state because uh, you can do the breaking changes and uh, directly change everything around it that uh, that it uh, still keeps working. Um, so this was also advantage uh, of this. Uh, and you know, have uh, at least when no related project exists, no um, uh, coordination effort between projects that you not necessarily uh, are under your control. So maybe they are uh, developed by someone other, by an organization, and they just use your code. Um, and uh, this is also something that you don't have to do um, at this point. <coughs> Uh, disadvantages is, uh, yes, everything is mixed up in this huge repository. So um, if someone contributes something very specific, for example, some uh, uh, backend, so for example, target query language, Splunk, or whatever else, um, then this contributor is likely only interested also in maintaining this part of the code, if the contributor is interested in maintaining it. This is a different topic. Um, but uh, this is uh, um, something when you have this huge repository and people open uh, up issues for everything, for detection rules, for code in the core library for for different backends you have a huge list of uh, of uh, issues and um, uh, as contributor of a small part you don't want to go to all the issues you yeah likely expect that someone assigns it to you and uh, then hopefully uh, the contributor does something or someone else has to take care because this is also a drawback in a huge repository that it's very hard to have some ownership or responsibility for a specific part of the code. So um, uh, this is what uh, we also then observed. It's that uh, people have done one-off contributions, which is totally okay, which is great, uh, but uh, nobody was aware that this code isn't maintained anymore. And then at some point someone else uh, opened an um, issue um, and maybe it's code for some ZM or so you don't have access to and then I can't help. And uh, this is also a problem problem at, at this point. And uh, also sometimes a problem, uh, the contributors or someone who uh, maybe wants to, to uh, uh, attach something to it has no choice about uh, where to contribute. So it's uh, still this huge repository and there's no uh, option or only hard option to put this in a different organization, for example, to maybe show some, yeah, for marketing reasons, sometimes uh, vendors do this also, uh, which is also totally okay, but uh, it's hard in, in this setting. And uh, yeah, fun story here was it uh, took us uh, us likely uh, two years or so until we determined in the, our core develop developer team um, that uh, what, what the release is. So in my world, a release was only the Sigma converter, only the code part. Um, at a certain point, uh, it turned out Florian thought that um, it also includes somehow the rules. So, and I was not aware about it. So we had a completely different understanding what the release is, and we weren't aware about it uh, until this point in, in development. Yeah, and you see, there are certain disadvantages when when a project grows and um, uh, you have a lot of content in this repository. So in 2020, uh, I've made the decision to to rewrite the whole tool, uh, tool chain because uh, further advantage or uh, disadvantage was it wasn't manageable anymore. So it was. Uh, yeah, almost impossible to add some bigger new features to it without breaking something else or breaking something uh, uh, else people wrote uh, around this. And therefore, the decision was, I don't touch this anymore or only in a very low maintenance mode and uh, start something completely new that is uh, clean. Um, so, the, which means throwing most of the code away. Uh, but also opportunities. So uh, it's uh, after three years of development of something, you get aware about that uh, there are some mistakes uh, that have had been done there. 
And it's also the opportunity to uh, adopt some good practices like uh, test-driven development. This was really a huge win. So before the code was only tested by running um, a Sigma converter with each backend on the whole rule repository, and if it finished without an error, it passed the test. So, uh, but um, there were different accidents. For example, at one point um, uh, the test passed, but the converter didn't output any. Uh, queries anymore, so it was basically not functional anymore, and uh, the test didn't discover it. So uh, now uh, with with Pi Sigma, so alone in Pi Sigma, there are over a thousand uh, tests, um, and if something breaks when I change something or someone else changes something, it usually gets directly visible. Um, so there are still some corner cases, but um, in most. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, most cases it, it gets directly uh, uh, discovered and um, then um, it can be changed. And uh, yeah, it also accelerated the speed of development, so it was uh, easy then to add new features to it because uh, yeah, because of this property, you know, okay, I add something, I change something, it breaks on somewhere different, but I know this and uh, um, can drive the development forward. And uh, yeah, uh, very obvious uh, code quality. Uh, uh, increased here. <clears throat> yeah, drawback, uh, uh, sure, uh, if I draw something array, uh, there are still few backends that are still only available in the legacy tool chain, which is now really outdated. It doesn't support all the new features of, of uh, Sigma, so correlations are not supported and so on. Uh, uh, one of the this victims is the grab backend, but I think I, I will <laughs> rewrite it uh, again at some point. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the project uh, structure has also changed. Uh, so uh, what we have done is we separated code and content. So the rules are in the old repository where, where we started everything, but the code completely split it off uh, this repository. So there's uh, the Pi Sigma repository with uh, um, uh, library code, and this code is only intended to be used as library. It's not as with Sigma Converter anymore, which was some mix of uh, CLI that you could also use a library with a very yeah, ugly API. Um, and uh, yeah, it was further separated, so processing pipelines to um, uh, adapt to uh, data, different data models or backends that take care of the conversion into target query languages are now also separate projects. And uh, here we uh, get also the advantage people can now take care of their backends. They can own their backends. They can uh, 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 say, okay, I'm now the maintainer of the backend and um, then uh, uh, take care of this part. And uh, everyone else knows, okay, this is maintained code. Or when we see, okay, uh, the developer lost interest because they don't use the CM anymore what they used before, then we can mark it as uh, yeah, uh, offhand and uh, then it's not uh, people know maybe the quality of this decreases or it doesn't support all the new features anymore. Yeah, there's a template to create this uh, project, so uh, I tried to improve the developer experience, especially for people that are not able to code or don't code in their daily job, which is quite usual. So if you um, do something in detection engineering, uh, often you don't uh, develop Python code, but write queries or so. So um, this is, uh, was also one of the pain points. People approached me, said, hey, I really want to develop a backend, but uh, I can't write Python code. And this cookie cutter template, uh, I think it uh, was a good thing to also enable these people to write uh, such backends. Yeah, everything is used in the Sigma CLI and also in the web uh, uh, interface SIG converter IO, so you can completely use uh, Sigma from uh, from a web interface. Also install it uh, on-prem uh, as you like it. I think it's uh, uh, can be installed in a Docker setup. Um, and yeah, finally, this front end use the Sigma rules. And uh, what you can also do, you can and people do this now. Uh, they take Pi Sigma and uh, use it in their own uh, CI/CD pipelines for their detections in their environments. 
Yeah, so what uh, uh, we have learned to recap this is uh, uh, starting in one big repository, it was not a mistake. I wouldn't say this. It was uh, good at this point because we were able really to iterate fast and drive this fast forward and uh, do major changes without uh, breaking uh, all the world around it. And with increased uh, complexity, this was not appropriate anymore. And um, yeah, then the quality decreased uh, and also the, the development speed uh, decreased. Um, and uh, yes, finally, there's a rewrite and split of all in all these projects uh, really also drive forward the adoption of, of the Sigma toolchain. So before people use this uh, with the CLI in some context, which was problematic, and now uh, many people also use this as a uh, library. Um, uh, some drawbacks of this is uh, now I have really a bunch of projects and if uh, uh, I make some breaking change in Pi Sigma, I have to touch all this project around the two. I have to tell other people who have uh, maintain their uh, backends and pipelines. Uh, and ask them if they can do this too or I can uh, um, uh, send some pull requests to it. So at this point, the effort increased and therefore I wouldn't recommend this uh, setup in, uh, in, in the beginning of a project where you have many breaking changes. And uh, yes, um, there's some dependency complexity that ar arose of this because we can now have some Pi Sigma version, which is compa uh, compatible with uh, the Sigma CLI, but there's maybe some backend that is not compatible with this Pi Sigma version anymore. And you can't use then the current uh, CLI version with this uh, old backend. So this is also some kind of problem here. Uh, maybe someone has a solution for this, So, uh, but but it uh, really get, got complex at this point. Uh, but it's not such a huge problem anymore because the amount of uh, breaking changes um, uh, really decreased and we don't have so much breaking changes anymore anymore. Another interesting topic, uh, uh, licensing, how you license your open source code. Uh, so uh, we started with uh, just as I every time started an open source project, GPL, all the things. Who thinks this is a good idea? <laughs> yeah, I, I think at least it's it's not a bad idea, uh, but there are certain points you should think about because um, in our context we had some specialty. It was uh, there was this content, the detection rules, um, uh, and uh, then the question also came up. Uh, yeah, you now have this cool query language. We want to integrate it in our ZM and our commercial product, but. Uh, how we can do this with GPL code? So because uh, then it gets problematic, and um, also in in uh, um, other commercial or company contexts, uh, this this uh, got a problem. Um, and um, also in regards of the queries, the question was uh, from uh, people that use it, how we can use this query. So if we generate a query for, from a Sigma rule and we change this query, do we have to contribute this back now because it's, uh, because it's uh, GPL? Or if we change uh, the uh, Sigma rule with some environmental baselining, so something that the... Uh, a user don't wants to share publicly because it's in regards of their environment and we also don't want environmental environmental uh, baselining of the users in the public repository. So no one wants this, but GPL says do this. And uh, at this point, this um, really got problematic. Um, and um, uh, yeah, a uh, uh, question arised from, from this. And what we have done is that uh, we changed, uh, changed the licensing. So we said, okay, the specification of Sigma, it's just public domain. You can use it uh, as you want. It's also extensible by design. So uh, totally fine uh, at this point. Um, 
there is um, uh, now uh, so the uh, detections are now now DRL licensed. So it's a detection rule license. It's a license we created um, uh, specific for this um, uh, reason. Uh, DRL is based on MIT and it adds uh, attribution of the rule author to to it. So this is what uh, in discussions with contributors what we we agreed on. They they said okay. We don't care if this is used as, uh, in, in some commercial product or so, uh, but if someone uses this rule, we want that the user is able to uh, see that I created the rule, and furthermore, um, it shouldn't be hidden somewhere deep in the directories of, uh, of, of the product, but it should be uh, visible in the UI. And in the UI, there shouldn't be also an attribution to Sigma HQ or the Sigma project. It should be then the name of the rule writer, the author of the rule. And um, yes, uh, that's um, what we then uh, try to bake into the DRL license. Um, yeah, the toolchain is now LGPL, so it's now more permissive. You can uh, use it um, uh, also in, in uh, commercial products better. Uh, so there was also the demand to make it even more permissive, but uh, uh, at a specific point, this was the decision that uh, LGPL is really a good match for, for um, the toolchain here. And for backends and processing pipelines, so the ones uh, I started are also LGPL, but uh, there are also backends that have a different license. So that's also possible that you write a backend and give it a different license for whatever reason. <clears throat> yeah, lessons learned in regards of licenses. So really uh, think about it if the license is pro appropriate to your use case, uh, because uh, switching licenses is really challenging. So you have to ask every one contributor of um, uh, the code or of the rules if this is okay to change the license, and if it's not not okay, you have to remove it. Uh, so um, it can end up in a lot of work. Uh, luckily, uh, in, in our context, uh, all people we uh, reached agreed on this, so it was okay for them. Um, this was uh, really uh, great. And uh, yeah, as I said, the license really has to match the use case, so especially if you release some detection rules in an open source repository, think about using something different the DRL or whatever else, because uh, it, for us it turned out GPL is not really appropriate for this uh, context. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, creating our own license, so I am not a lawyer, um, uh, and all of us in our project were not uh, lawyers, uh, especially in, in the area of licensing, so it was some kind of stunt, I would say. We have done it anyways. Um, some people said, yeah, it looks okay, um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would really consider it carefully if you really want to create some, some own license. We really thought long time about it, uh, and uh, in the end, uh, um, this was the solution for, for the problem we have seen there. Yeah, uh, release and, con and contribution. So um, what I would say is release early, release often. It's because uh, when you do this, um, people can also access the project early and give early feedback. And this is really one of the most valuable parts in, in open source projects. Um, and um, also gives the people the opportunity to use uh, the um, uh, new features directly when they appear. Um, yeah, uh, in regards of contributions, uh, it's always a question, is the contributor willing to maintain it? Is it a one-off uh, contribution? Uh, regardless of this, all contributions are great, so uh, I don't uh, say uh, any of this direction is the wrong one. So if someone contributes something, it's uh, 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 always some way forward. At least it's some, maybe some inspiration about something that can be done better. Um, uh, also, especially in regards of contributors, uh, when you contribute to an open source project, you should really think about is it only a small fix or improvement, then it's totally okay to just 
make a pull request and uh, contribute, or if it, if it is a major change or something new concepts that you want to introduce, then I recommend reach out to to the maintainers of the project because there can be really some good reasons uh, that this has uh, should be done in a different way, or maybe it's already work in progress somewhere or so, and uh, therefore you should really uh, reach out to, to the people because for me as maintainer of a project, I really feel bad when I click on the reject button in a pull request. So uh, it's it's uh, I don't feel nice when people wrote 100 lines of code and the idea is good, but I have to say for some reason, an app, but it doesn't fit into the concept, and we, we currently develop something similar here. Uh, yeah, then the balance between ensuring quality and uh, uh, being tolerant. Uh, so there are certain points I say they uh, are must have, so the tests must pass. So if something is wet, I will not uh, click on, on merge. Um, and also, if you develop something that adds something new to it, then there should be also a test. And we also now enforce code format things that we don't have difficult formatting styles in the code with black it's yeah it's some people like it some people don't like it but uh, in the end it's an improvement because the code looks similar uh, all uh, the time in the project um, but um, if uh, some contribution doesn't meet the requirements I'm also fine sometimes, or mostly it's only a few minutes, I invest into the pull request then, or I uh, put a comment in it, uh, hey, could you add a test for this and that, and uh, then this works. Um, so, um, especially in, the re in regards of the Sigma project, if you make a pull request, don't be shy, do this, because uh, yeah, I and also the other ones uh, try to be supportive that your pull request finally gets merged into it. And yeah, in regards of roadmaps, yeah, there are always plans to to uh, what will be done next. My next plan is to release Pi Sigma 1.0 with uh, some um, yeah structural improvements too. But um, because I do this in my spare time, there is no timeline, no dates or so. So this is something people. <laughs> Always again ask for, hey, do you have a roadmap with some times that I say no, it's, uh, it's really my, most of this is my spare time and, uh, I don't want to have deadlines in my private life. Uh, yeah, and uh, now I come to, to the final topic, staying motivated, which is related to the last point. So uh, developing an open source project is uh, really a lot of, uh, sometimes I'm really motivated and say, cool, now I develop a new feature, then I look at all the issues, and the evening is over, and I only fix issues, because, uh, yeah, there are also very sub ones, and uh, where I have to really deep dive into the code. Um, then also support people and solving problems people have with this, ask, uh, uh, answering questions people ask. Uh, it's it's really lots of communication. And in the end, uh, when there's some time, I yeah, uh, this is my favorite: developing new features or improving something that already exists that it gets better. And yeah, what to do uh, to stay motivated, especially from uh, the contributor side or when you are user. Um, feedback is always great. Uh, post positive and negative, so if you point out some bug or some issue, I'm really happy to, because then I know there is something I can improve and fix it. And even better is, this really makes me happy when uh, the pull request to fix directly comes with it. So this is really a great feeling. Um, and uh, as I said, don't be shy, try it. Um, yeah. Another possibility is sponsoring. A long time we didn't have done this, or people approach us, hey, can we give you some money, because we think Sigma is great, and uh, now I enabled um, uh, two years ago, I think, sponsoring in, in the GitHub, uh, in, with GitHub sponsors, and uh, yeah, it's also a source of motivation, uh, but also spending money into funding domains, or um, uh, yeah, sometimes I do some experiments uh, in, in cloud systems, or also for stickers, they are on the table here, um, so you can grab some, or approach me, I have them also on my back. Um, and uh, yeah, this gives the possibility to also spend uh, some money on the project uh, without uh, the families complaining about why you spent uh, uh, your money for this expensive hobby also. <laughs> um, and yeah, my recommendation, don't stress yourself, especially don't make maybe the pressure other people have by 
using your project to your private uh, pressure. So um, uh, really, it's really important to take breaks. You see here my my um, uh, contribution heat map in GitHub uh, for the last year, and you see there are some hotspots, and there are also some points where I didn't have done so much on Sigma. Maybe I have worked on some different project. Maybe it was a stressful time anyway, so uh, it's really important to also not uh, spend all the time on this, yeah, spend some time with the family, with uh, do some sports or so, whatever. And yes, uh, the, now I come to the end, and I uh, really want to say thank you for all the people de depicted here in the picture. So these are the um, yeah contributors to the Sigma repository and to the PySigma repository. See a lot of people, and uh, yes, uh, uh, you are the ones who makes this also a great project, and uh, also motivate me to uh, motivate me to continue on it. Thanks. Do we have a question? Uh, we might take one. We are the only thing standing between you and lunch, we know. Uh, we have a housekeeping thing, so don't run away. Uh, but first a question, if anyone has one. Thomas? Yeah. Um, I'm uh, currently uh, investigating, uh, uh, well, my private code going to public and so this was really interesting one of the tough things that I'm facing is like how do you keep everybody motivated how how do you keep them the people with the same idea in the same line because one of of course one of the most fearsome thing is that of course you you get a, a fork you know because yeah nobody agrees upon so we start a new project how do you handle those those more yeah human challenges I would suppose uh, you, you are talking about keeping contributors motivated or? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And keeping them in, 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 in line, whatever yes. line there is, of course, but. Yeah, so, so how I try to do this is to communicate with the people who do this. Uh, also, when uh, someone contributes, so uh, if I really not on a high pressure, so I always make some comment under the pull request, thank you for this and that, uh, or some uh, reaction on this. Uh, this is how I try to, to uh, give the people the impression that uh, I value their contribution. That's, uh, it's really great what they are doing. So this is how I try it. It, at least. All right. Um, we have some challenges coming on. Uh, David is coming on scene to tell you about them. But first, thank you to Thomas. Please give David a.